push and pull. Know when you need to relax, know when you need to push forward. Barry Hunter is telling Isaac Dante, make him work. Don't let him set up and take some chances. He's giving Ramirez just what he wants. He's letting him recharge. He's yeah. allowing him to physically recharge and mentally set up his next attack. And you have to respect the power of Ramirez. Dog Bay usually throws caution to the wind. He's respecting Ramirez's power. Ramirez better respect Dog Bay's power as well. It's a two-way street for both of these fighters. Good shot right there from Ramirez. Clean straight up. No answer from Dog Bay. It's a lot of fakes. Dealing with a lot of fakes. You see the foot fake right there. Different change. Not a level change. It's a foot fake from Ramirez. Throws you off. You think he's coming, but he's not coming. So you stay tense and you hesitate. It makes you second guess yourself. Paid off for Ramirez. I know you were wild with some of the numbers they were talking about. Oh my goodness, 235 pounds being a big person that? That's a federal. And you only weigh 126 pounds? That's unbelievable. Even though Dog Bay's having success, you can't help but think that Ramirez is still looking for that one big shot with the left hand, either upper or straight or overhand left. They return fire here to close out this fifth round. Good stuff with a title on the line. And watch how he drops it at times. And that left hook could be available. You see the total punches through five rounds, where Ramirez has a 62 to 43 advantage. Off balance that time was Ramirez as Dogbe throws two punches. And a right hand comes in from Dogbe, and Ramirez fires back. For better for worse, this is where Dogbe wants to eat. In exchanges and leading aggressively without hesitation. And now that power hand on the left hand. So don't be standing there allowing that to happen. It's time to eat now. Ramirez just is standing up with a lot of energy again. Don't they can't let him off the hook this time. He has to get going with his offense. And again, it's all about the positioning, getting out of position. For Ramirez, that's where Dog Bay is having success. Every time he's out of position, Dog Bay needs to attack. That's the shot that Ramirez is looking for to change the course of this fight or to end this fight abruptly. One big shot, preferably the left hand, either straight over or uppercut like he just missed. Good. It was there right there. He's looking for that jab at mid-range. That's what he's looking for so he can land that uppercut. Chin in his night night. There was one right there. The 
Mears doing a good job of picking his spots wisely. Woo! Making him pay for his mistakes. Lunging forward. Okay, I got something for you. As Ramirez gives him that something. Dog Ray will not go to sleep. But Mears is looking for the left hand. And he wants to knock Dog Ray out. And he is there again. Ramirez is he's such a master with his left hand. You know, most southpaws, like a Lomachenko, for instance, like to exit the weak side, the lead hand side, and get around the bones. Ramirez doesn't mind going to the front side to take on the right hand because he feels that his left hand is a lot better than the right hand. You see him moving left. You see him moving left. 400 amateur fights on display. And people say, oh, it doesn't matter. That stuff carries you into this professional prize fighter. You see two gold medals on display. And having to fight on the Cuban national team under immense pressure, you have a lifestyle change if you can't hack it. And this is what you're seeing, a guy who's used to this type of pressure. He told us, he said, I feel like I'm built for big nights. And right now, he's showing, his, showing himself strong. And the pressure of a team that has won 37 Olympic boxing gold medals. He has two of them, 2012, 2016. Started his career, that amateur career, with a 129 fight winning streak. I'm gonna tell you, I fought a lot of guys that had more skills than I would have had, and I was able to find a way. You know, I took my technique and what I knew, and tactically, I was on point. I knew what they didn't like, and I threw it in their face all night long. Kendo Hall, understood. Devin Alexander, these are talented, talented fighters. This isn't a fight that Dog Bay can't win. He's just not doing the right thing to win right now. Display. That's all because he knows the range. He knows where he needs to be to land that type of punch. It's close enough where he can land, but far enough away, as you see right here, where Dog Bay can't land. That's the amateur experience. That's the pro experience. That's the work with Ishmael Salas. That's everything on display tonight in the biggest moment of his life and career. He's just boxing like he always has. Hitting. Everything that you would think would break a man. He said it only made me stronger. The difficulties that he had to endure to get here and find freedom in the U.S. Now a chance to elevate his career to the next level. 123 to 84 is the connect advantage as we start round number 10 in favor of Robesi Ramirez. I don't know what Dog Bay went mentally in those last two rounds, but he lost some momentum. He's trying to fight to get it back now. I don't know if he's going to be overly anxious and walk into something, but he has these moments in fights where the corner, the team, they're telling him all the right things, but it's almost like he's in a different place mentally. It's not fatigue. I don't even think it's fear. It's just, I don't know if he's not trusting himself or if he's just mentally in a fog, but he gives up key moments and key rounds. And Ramirez is in a good groove right now. Well, you see where that, you see where the exit is. The exit for Ramirez. <laughs> if he wants to get away from Dog Bay, all he has to do is keep moving left. Harry Hunter, the trainer of Dog Bay. Hunter has recognized some of those moments in recent fights as well, Trey, that you've talked about. He said that even in the last fight against Joey Gonzalez, he almost got to that place where you get those negative thoughts associated with the Navarrete fights. But the best way to push those negative thoughts out is to get busy, start working, start exerting yourself, start hitting your opponent. That's the best way to get those negative thoughts out. If you sit there and dwell on them and allow a sharpshooter like this to keep hitting you, things are only get worse. And now you're seeing the sharpshooter. You're seeing the probing, splitting jab, followed by the left hand, and then wrapping around was Ramirez. Ooh, Dog Bay lost his footing. Ramirez met him with an uppercut. 
in the inside. Mm. Well, Don Baker start off by setting off that exit. That's what he needs to do. Cut that exit off. Don't let him move left. May force him to his right side. is definitely starting to set in. I'm starting to see it a little bit on Ramirez's punches, but not as hard and effective as that were early on. But he is big and deep in spots. And willing to exchange with all the Good exchange for the whole fist out. Ramirez just missed with that left uppercut. Wow, to see who will grab the WBO Featherweight Championship belt. A belt that was held by Shakur Stevenson before he moves up to claim 130-pound championship status. Now, Shakur Stevenson will be fighting next week as we will see him against the undefeated 16-0 Suchero Yoshino. The card next week also features the undefeated heavyweight, next great heavyweight, Jared Anderson, and the blue chip prospect, Keyshawn Davis. That's next week on ESPN. Before vacated, the man on Navarrete then came up and took this belt. And now these two fight for it here for these final six minutes. Andre, pressing the action, firing off. Yeah, he's winning this round just, just by backing up Ramirez and banging on him because Ramirez doesn't throw punches because he can't throw them because he's not in position to throw them shots when he's getting pressed back. And Ramirez is first time ever going in this in this distance right now, 11th round. He's never been this. He's never felt the pressure that he's feeling right now. He never felt his body fatigued the way it is right now. That's psychological, man. And he's taking this round off. Figuring out that 45 degree angle that 
Ramirez takes and he lunges forward with the right hand. Was on balance. Ramirez just threw an uppercut. Big land hard. Ramirez throwing every punch around at this point. There's Dog Bay trying to get after it, trying to salvage something. Couldn't split the guard that time. Hot down scored in round 12 by Ramirez. Seemingly already in plenty of control of things at that moment. Yeah, such a master of range. Yes, he is. He knows what he wants to do. Two, three steps ahead, two, three moves ahead at all times. with that left hand, so accurate with that left hand. Angle on each other, just to, oh. All that long with that left hand. What's more impressive is the one two he landed after as he was going backwards, stopped on a dime and got it off without getting hit. Listen, yep, we say we can say what we want to say about power punches. When I see an IQ on display, that's what gets me excited. And you're seeing that with Ramirez. It's harder to do this than to go out there and clutch somebody down. You control the land, control the moment, control the front. Dre, there's another sharp one, too. Mm. Against another man that wants to win just like you. And that's not a So determined, Dre. Mm. Respect the effort of Dog Bay. Respect the prowess and toughness of the man. That's a very good summation in terms of exactly how this played out. You did get the effort from Dog Bay. But you got supreme skill, ring generalship, accuracy, and a raised hand there for Ramirez, who will almost assuredly soon find out that he has secured his first world championship. So many supporters here. His advisor Jose Espargo, his strength and conditioning coach Larry Wade, his fans deserves a lot of. This is how Coffee Box Tallies ended up. As you see, Robesi Ramirez outlanded Dog Bay 160 to 113. He was able to win 45 percent. Of his power punches, the dog base 26 percent. And no matter what they do with replay in that 12th round, looking at that knockdown, you would have to think that there's a comfortable margin in favor of Robesi Ramirez. Casey Ramirez, you consider everything he went through just to defect to the U.S., the incredible story of escaping the regime in Cuba happened in July of 2018. He was able to make a desperate phone call, find some help, make his way to the U.S. And now here he is. Pro fight number 13 and about to be crowned the world champion. Here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. David Sutherland scores the bout 117-110. Chris Flores scores the bout 118-109. And Joe Mason scores the bout 119-108. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And the new WBO featherweight champion of the world, Robesi Ramirez! What a 
feelings. And so, well deserving. Such respect between these two corners, these two participants. As Robesi Ramirez and all these supporters who have come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, can celebrate tonight. Robesi Ramirez is the new WBO featherweight world champion, as we will hear from him coming up immediately as the state of boxing on ESPN Plus begins right now. Welcome to the state of boxing. I'm with the new featherweight champion of the world. Two gold medals. But describe what it means to be a world champion. Dos medallas de oro, pero hoy eres campeón mundial. Describe este momento. Mira, estoy viviendo una nueva etapa de mi vida. Una nueva, una nueva historia que estamos construyendo en el bolso profesional. Ya hice lo que tenía que hacer en el bolso amateur. I'm living a new stage in my life. This is a new history that I'm writing, and I did everything I had to do as an Olympian. I won two Olympic gold medals, and now I can call myself a champion. ¿Cómo lograste esta victoria ante un guerrero como Isaac Dogbe? How did you achieve this victory against a true warrior like Isaac Dogbe? My respect for Isaac Dogbe, tremendo boxeador. Eh, tener mucho respeto, tener mi admiración y nada, simplemente seguir la estrategia de Sada, hacer el trabajo que trabajamos tantos, tantos meses y, y aquí está el resultado. All the respect to a warrior like Isaac Dogbe, he has my admiration and all it took was me listening to this genius, Ismael Salas, because I did that and that took me to victory. Ahora, eres campeón mundial después de la derrota. Empezaste tu carrera perdiendo y ahora te sumas a nombres como Henry Armstrong, Bernard Hopkins, los hermanos Márquez en ser campeón. ¿Qué significa? You started your career with a loss, but you didn't get dejected. You won 13 in a row, now 14, and you become a world champion like Henry Armstrong and legend like Bernard Hopkins and the Marcus brothers. What did it take to do that? Mira, creo que, que como he dicho desde que llegué aquí, eh, en esta preparación para esta pelea, Creo que si no hubiera pasado por ese tropiezo, que si no hubiera tenido esa derrota, no hubiera llegado donde Sala, gracias a Uva, por, por decirme que tenía que ir para la vega y no hubiera llegado a la vega, trabajado con Sala, conformado este equipo que tengo ahora, y no estuviera aquí ahora mismo. I believe that things happen for a reason. Had it not been for that loss in my pro debut, I never would have ended up with Ismael Salas. Your Dennis Ugas would never have told me you have to move to Vegas, you have to change your life, and I never would have gotten this team together to be where I am today. Hoy eres campeón mundial a disfrutarlo. ¿Qué sigue para ti? ¿A quién quieres? Today you get to enjoy being a world champion. What's next? Who do you want? Bueno, realmente ahora, como dice, a disfrutarlo. Dedicarle esto siempre a mis hijas, a mis hijas, a mi familia, toda mi gente de Cuba, la gente de Miami, todos los cubanos que vinieron acá, eh, siempre pidiendo por la libertad de Cuba. Y, por supuesto, quiero pelear con los mejores. Sea Leo González, sea Leonardo López, I now call myself a champion and yes, I'm going to enjoy this moment because my family came out here, all the Cubans at home in exile, I just can't wait for them to be free and more importantly to be an example for all of them and I want all the smoke, I want all the guys, whether it's Joel Gonzalez who had a great performance tonight or the champions, Luis Alberto Lopez or Mick Conlon, whoever they want to put in front of me, I want all the great fights. Joe, we send it to you for now. Thank you very much, Bernardo. And now he joins the list of those world champions who lost their pro debut. And it's Henry Armstrong, Ben Leonard, Bernard Hopkins, <laughs> Marquez. I mean, these are all-time greats of guys who have lost their pro debut and then go on to become world champions and he was quick to reference that as the critical moment a guy who has accomplished so much has two gold medals he references losing his pro debut as the critical moment he says i would have never been with the team i'm with i would have never been on this path to now have this as he celebrates with his family with his team and bernardo is with isaac on the other side 
always a warrior. You gave the people a show tonight. You came up short in terms of becoming a two-division world champion. What are you feeling right now? All I have to say, God is still king. Praise be to